includes testing the pool structures and the construction of the water slide. Watch this space for more updates. I'm Moana Hope, most people call me Mo. I've grown up playing at Glenway Football Club and now I play for Collingwood Football Club. I grew up in Glenroy, born and bred. My first year ever I played at Hatfield. From the second year all the way up to year under 12, it's Glenroy Football Club. I'm one of 14 um, and the reason why I got into it was my dad and my brothers. I used to watch all their games from the age of three. It was community football, so it was the best type of football. So proud. Oh, Local footy is really important, I think, you know, especially uh, Glenmore being the suburb and this being uh, the main supplier of sports for the community. You look at what Glenmore is trying to do here, they're trying to bring up a women's team, and, and in the background is my niece who just finished under 12, so at the moment she hasn't got a pathway. So Melanie's played for Glenmore from the same age as me, from the age of seven, and she is now too old to play boys football. So she's excited about the girls' team, aren't you? So she's extremely competitive, not as good as me. Calm down. Probably a few kids that are not on the right road, and I think if you give them that, that sport or that outlet to go and, and meet new people, it can benefit the community in more ways than one. What do I say to girls? It doesn't matter who you are, what your skill level you are, what fitness level you are, it's a good environment to be in, it's fun, you meet new mates. This is where you want to be, so come down and have a kick. So I'm Claire Johnston and I'm an accredited cricket bat maker and the first female in the world. I um, learnt how to make cricket bats from Ian Callan. There's a lot of bats out there for men and I felt that there was an opportunity there to actually work with women to make better bats and to actually make them for their style. So recently I was commissioned to make five cricket bats for the Pasco Vale Headfield uh, Cricket Club for their under 13s girls cricket team and uh, yeah, to see their faces when they were given the cricket bats was just brilliant. So what I'd really love to be able to do is to keep working with my local community, the local cricket clubs, um, particularly the women, and uh, yeah, work to make great cricket bats. My name is Michael Tortoni. I'm the founder of Melbourne's legendary jazz club, Bennett's Lane. I've recently moved to the very, very cool Brunswick. The Jazz Lab here on Leslie Street, Brunswick is Melbourne's new home of jazz. In my old club, you might have seen Prince for a late night set, or the Winton Marsalis Band, or even the Harry Connick Jr. Trio. My new club will also host stars of contemporary music starting with the Bill Frizzell Trio for the Melbourne International Jazz Festival, as well as local stars. So drop in for some great music and a drink at the Jazz Lab. My name is Zainab Abouid, I'm 19 years old and I currently study the Bachelors of Law and International Relations at La Trobe University. I partake in my local community by volunteering with local MPs such as Peter Killil. I like to also attend and organise events that surround family violence to help ensure that women are heard and young women have voices. I wanted to represent myself as a Muslim woman and um, represent my community so I thought um, why not start at a young age so when I grow up perhaps I can come be in Parliament one day. I feel like I should take advantage of these opportunities and make sure that I advocate on behalf of women, um, especially in my community that are subjected to family violence. My name's Leslie. I have been with Moreland Family Daycare as an educator for over 36 years, I think. Family Daycare is a wonderful organisation. We look after children in our own home, they blend in with the family, and it's fantastic. I love Family Daycare. I can choose my own hours, very flexible. I've made wonderful friendships with lots of the families. I'm now looking after children of the children I used to care for. The children just growing and developing is a wonderful... Hey, my name is Councillor Dale Martin and I'm the Chairperson of the Urban Planning Committee. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to tonight's meeting. 
Our meeting is being held on the traditional country of the Rwandari people, and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners of the land. I would like to pay my respects to their elders past and present, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. I acknowledge that currently many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have made more than home, and in doing so have contributed to a positive, rich diversity of this municipality. Members of the gallery, please note this urban planning meeting is being recorded and web streamed live to Council's website and Facebook. This recording will also be available as video on demand. Gallery attendees are advised that they will be recorded during the meeting. Councillors, this is just a reminder that in line with the adopted councillor conduct principles as outlined in the councillor code of conduct, councillors should ensure that they conduct themselves in the meeting with integrity, impartiality and exercise their responsibilities in the interest of the local community and not improperly seek to confer or advantage any person. This behaviour will support the principles for leadership and good governance that secures public confidence in the office of councillor. I would like to begin tonight by introducing the councillors and officers that are in attendance. Uh, councillor Natalie Abu. Councillor Sue Bolton. Councillor Anna Olivia Cullihan. Councillor Helen Davidson. Hi. Our Mayor, Councillor John Kavanagh. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Jess Dorney. Hi. Councillor Alia Farnley. Good evening. Councillor Mark Riley. Good evening. And Councillor Oscar Yudlitz. The officers in attendance tonight are Group Manager City Development, Philip Priest, Unit Manager of Urban Planning, Narelle Jennings, Planning Coordinator, Robert Shatford, Principal Urban, Urban Planner, Vito Galante, Senior Urban Planner, Lindsay Coots, and Governance Officer, Saskia Hunter. I'd like to ask councillors if there are any apologies for tonight's meeting. Um, I have an apology from Councillor Lambros Tapinos. Thank you. Um, so can I have a... I'm happy to move that. Yep. So uh, moved by Councillor Kavanagh, seconded by Councillor Davidson. Um, is there any discussion, councillors? No? Um, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. Moving on to the minutes, could I please have a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of January 2018? Councillor Davidson, uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Farnley. Uh, Farnley, thank you very much. Uh, is there any discussion, councillors? I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? All those against, I declare that carried. Okay, thank you, councillors. So I would like to start by giving everyone an outline of how the Urban Planning Committee will run this evening. Firstly, the relevant plan will begin each agenda item by introducing the report and officer's recommendations. I will then give any objectors the opportunity to move to the lectern to make their submission. After this time, the applicant will give, be given the opportunity to speak. If you are making a submission, please clearly state your name and address for the record. You are requested to present your viewpoints clearly and concisely on why you support or oppose the planning application. Please do not repeat what earlier speakers have said and keep the discussion focused on relevant issues and points not previously raised. If you are opposed to the planning application, would you please inform the committee why you are opposed and suggest an alternative approach which would satisfy your concerns. Please use this opportunity to focus on your concerns rather than matters of detail in the officer's report. Please note that there is a limit of three minutes for each speaker, but as chairperson, I reserve the right to increase or reduce the time available to any speaker. I ask that all attendees in the gallery please be respectful at all times and give everyone that speaks the opportunity to state their position uninterrupted. So we'll now commence with the presentation of reports and I'll pass this over to officers for the first agenda item of tonight and that is 342 to 348 Victoria Street, 32 Wilkinson Street, and 13 and 15 Rosser Street, Brunswick. And that is MPS 2017-745. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So this is an application for a multi-storey mixed-use development. Uh, as you can see on the screen um, at the back of the theatre, uh, the site is adjacent to the Brunswick station uh, and it is located to the west of Sydney Road. The site is located within a commercial one zone uh, in the part of the Brunswick Activity Centre and it's affected by a number of overlays. Uh, these include a de design and development overlay which sets out the preferred uh, built form character for the area and two heritage overlays which affect um, just small parts of the site. So a heritage listed chimney in the centre of the site uh, and two terrace houses fronting Rosser Street. <coughs> It's proposed to redevelop the land with four uh, different buildings uh, up to a height of a maximum height of 11 storeys. So the image uh, on the screen shows a bird's eye view of the proposal 
uh, with Victoria Street located to the right-hand side of the image. In summary, the proposal comprises two levels of basement car parking accessed from Victoria Street, a total of 177 dwellings, a range of commercial uses, uh, including one dedicated office building in the um, northwest corner of the site, uh, retention of the heritage listed chimney and pipe demolition and extension to the Rosser Street Terrace dwellings. So the next couple of images on the screen show you some uh, views of the proposal, uh, what it will look like in Victoria Street, uh, what it will look like in Rosser Street and what it would look like in Wilkinson Street. And some of the positive aspects of the proposal include uh, high quality architecture, enhanced site permeability that allows views towards the chimney, access to the Brunswick station and provision of employment generating uses. The application attracted 12 objections uh, during the public notification process. A range of issues were raised which included uh, among other things height, car parking and traffic issues, amenity impacts, impacts on future development potential of adjoining lots and visibility of the chimney. On the 2nd of February, the permit applicant lodged a review at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal against Council's failure to determine the application. And despite some of the positive aspects of the proposal, it is recommended that Council's submission to VCAT be that no planning permit should issue. Uh, and that's based on the grounds contained on pages three, four and five of tonight's agenda. But in summary, summary, the main issues relate to a failure to comply with the objectives and built, uh, key built form provisions of the design and development overlay, internal amenity issues, uh, insufficient accessible dwellings, inadequate landscaping, excessive demolition at the rear of 13 and 15 Rosser Street, and a failure to demonstrate best practice in environmentally sustainable design. Thank you. Thank you very much. So are there any objectors here tonight that wish, would wish to speak to this item? Yep, please come forward to the lectern. Just a reminder as well, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. So Jenny Hill, 54 Hinkle Street, Brunswick. And uh, I guess that there are two things I would bring council's attention to. One is that the built form approaching, uh, heading towards Sydney Road, is unrelenting it's a big it's like a promenade and it will be an unrelenting shape above the height that um, the standard set so I see that as as something that we will never be able to get around it will be there and others will grow to the same size um, and I also uh, question the um, the thought that's gone into not just the traffic for now but what will happen when we um, ideally get a raised I don't know, up, upfield railway line or some sort of removal of the crossing where the entrances to this particular building in Victoria Street will severely limit what the options are for residents and um, perhaps put us at the end of the list for what is possible in that area. And there are already traffic concerns. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other objectors that wish to come forward? Please come forward. I'm Marissa, can you hear me? Yeah, yep. Marissa Galicia, I'm at 118 Mitchell Street, Brunswick. Um, our objection is a little bit different, I presume, to the other objectors because we have a commercial property, which is a property on Wilkinson Street, which is bordered by the green border around, um, in the block. So um, obviously we're going to be um, hemmed in on three sides by the development with 10 storeys at the back and 10 storeys on the west side towards the rail station. Um, my main objection is to the use of perforated screens to the corridors of building four, which is the building directly in front of um, the rail station. Uh, this would impact on future development on our site, should we desire, although at the moment we don't. Um, we've looked at the indicative concept plans, which is TP2115, 
And they do indicate though that although there are perforated screens along levels three, four, five, and six, three, two, three, and four and five, which would cover either 50% of the boundary wall or 80% of the boundary wall, uh, the indicative indicative concept plans require us that we provide for a light and air well in the northwest corner of our property. I don't understand with a development that covers almost 7,000 square metres why we on 400 square metres need to provide an air well for them. So that impacts on any potential future development on our site. Also, they do provide concept plans, but there's no guarantee that those plans um, relate to anything that would be built on our property. The concept plans um, provide for three storeys of development with a car park of 300 square metres down the bottom, presumably, um, and five apartments in the two levels above, presumably in response to Bidding five cars in the car park. Now, um, this there's no guarantee that that's what can be built there, um, especially considering that they haven't considered things like increase um, car parks with the use of stackers or with um, excavation of the site. Um, and also the changing paradigm that's happening along the rail line, as you've seen with the development of sites like the Commons and the, and the Florence with either no car parking or minimal car parking, and which is also, um, uh, which, uh, is also uh, uh, which, uh, also feeds into other development sites going along the rail line, up along Bree Street. Um, a solution to this um, need for air and light along the corridors to apartments, which already have, by the way, terraces and windows, which either face a rail station or face Wilkinson Street, um, is if uh, the developers also put in or extend the corridor on levels two and three to Wilkinson Street and put in perforated screens which face Wilkinson Street. They've already done that for levels four and five and six and above up to ten. Um, the other two concerns, sorry about the pages. Sorry, I'll just ask if you, if you could unwind up, that'd be fantastic. Okay, is that our roof will be exposed with um, the development of the walkway. The walkway goes up one storey, which means that our roof at the moment is five or six metres high, and that will bring people within a metre of our roof. So we envision problems with people climbing onto our roof, particularly since the back wall would be nine storeys in height. It'll be white. It'll be a graffiti magnet. So we hope that the developer will actually, um, as soon as they've built that building, put a mural down there and hopefully a barrier, a high barrier between the walkway and our building. And the other one is the shared car pedestrian zone. Or well, I'm in agreement with that, but I think it's a bit premature because uh, the development only covers one side of Wilkinson Street. Uh, we have a driveway on that side. There's also a driveway on the other side. Um, again, that would impact on any future development. We don't know how many cars would be accessing our site. At the moment, it's a gym, obviously no cars. Uh, we don't know whether any future tenants would require car access and um, how many cars would go in and out of our site um, in future development. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectives? Please come forward. Hey, good evening. My name is uh, Frank Zanella. I'm representing the owner and rate pay of 368 to 370 Victoria Street. Um, a couple of items that I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, overshadowing comments have been made about Wilkinson Street, but there's no 
overshadowing comments made about the upfield path, which I'm sure um, has, has a greater number of pedestrians than Wilkinson Street. And that also encompasses the railway station, so there's overshadowing concerns for the railway station. With regards to the proposed development at the corner of uh, Victoria Street and uh, the upfield line and adjacent 368 Victoria Street, um, there's no setback. The development is currently proposing to build on the boundary with windows on the western elevation right adjacent to the property at 3683 70 Victoria Street and that will negate any future development of 368 and 370 Victoria Street and that um, then follows on the devaluation of that property as it stands at the moment if the proposal was to go ahead. Um, just on the overshadowing too, obviously the overshadowing will go on to 368 to 370 Victoria Street. That warehouse has currently got skylights, so they'll be affected. The, because of the uh, limited or the reduced amount of sunlight ending up on the roof, you're going to have maintenance and corrosion problems. So that's obviously an, an, another concern. So they're the main items of concern at the moment. Um, just regarding the report that was that uh, the council has written um, regarding separation, and they provided a statement here that that uh, clause 22.07 um, basically says that you can build. Uh, there's no separation required where there is no outlook to the side and rear of the property, provided it does not affect the reasonable future development opportunity of the adjacent site. So what's being proposed at the moment will affect or will affect <coughs> the reasonable future development opportunity of the site. Um, it goes on to say this report states that it does not, it, it is not considered to adversely affect development potential of this land, the I-368 to 3 70 Victoria Street. I strongly disagree with that statement. And I just want to note that for the record. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors in the gallery? Please come forward. Uh, my name is David Park. I'm from 9 Wilkinson Street. Um, essentially, I'd just like to voice my support for um, the details of the report that's been submitted um, beforehand um, and just reiterate what was in our initial objection, um, that we believe the street wall height in Rosser and Wilkinson Street was needlessly excessive and would have a negative impact on the amenity of the, the streets in the area as a whole, similarly um, the overall height of the development. Um, and we also objected to the reduction in mandated car parking, which hasn't been mentioned yet, so I might speak to that if that's okay. Um, also, I'm not sure if this is the forum, but the report um, mentioned that the maximum street wall height for Wilkinson and Rosser Street, I believe, was between seven and 10 metres. Um, however, in map 1B on page 12 of the Schedule 18 to the planning um, scheme, the Moreland Planning Scheme, it suggests that the maximum street wall height should be equal to the street width. And I was just after clarification as to which is correct. Um, Wilkinson Street is nine metres wide. Um, Rosser Street is similar. Um, as for the, the traffic impacts, this is the main area where we diverge from the report that was tabled for this meeting. Um, the traffic report provided by the applicant acknowledges already that it's difficult to park in peak times in the area. Um, there are multiple new developments coming online, um, including the one near, near Woolworths that you've probably, probably noticed. Um, we understand that discouraging people to drive and making it inconvenient to do so is an attempt to encourage mode shift towards public transport, and we support this, and this is where I'm conflicted, um, because practically we're not sure this accounts for the use of the area at the moment, particularly uh, by elderly, um, sort of more elderly, I guess, just, yeah, demographic. Um, and with the waiver of the loading dock requirements, those will run and own their own business in the proposed development. Um, the report says that the development would add seven or hundred more car movements to Victoria Street each day. So suffice to say, the surrounding streets and car parks would be placed under more stress than they are currently. Um, so we believe that 
the development should be tasked with accommodating some of the extra demand it is likely to create by providing uh, short-term car parking for visitors to the retail spaces. Um, I'd also like to say that we have no objection to the reduction in um, car parking for residential um, purposes. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors who wish to speak? No? no. Oh, yep, please come forward. Just making sure you're raising points that haven't been previously raised as well. Um, you can. Uh, I won't be too long. Uh, Jazz Stretton, 54 Hinkle Street. I'd like to support everything the uh, planners have said because they did a fantastic job. Um, I guess the amenity of Victoria Street will be significantly impacted by this development. It's going to overshadow the entire area. It's going to stick out. It's ugly. A great solution for it would be something like what's happened at the Lux factory around the corner or a proposal that actually meets the planning rules as, it stand, as they stand. Thank you very much. Um, and I do agree with that statement. Our planners do do a fantastic job here in Moreland. Um, are there any other objectors? No? Okay. Um, is the proponent or representative of the proponent here? Please come forward. Thanks, Councillor. Thanks for the opportunity to present. My name is Giovanni Gattini. I'm the project planner. Um, if I may start off with saying to you that we've forensically looked at the officer's report and we find ourselves in agreement about a number of factors about this proposal, particularly the fact that it has got very high architectural excellence and that ultimately it's going to be a very good and, in fact, an excellent contribution to Brunswick from an architecture or build form point of view. But I think to be fair, the project hasn't been credited with the benefits that it actually creates for that area. And to that uh, vein, I say to you the following, that the very premise behind this design was to expose the Brunswick Railway Station for the first time in 100 years by providing a number of links through the site. Now, the officers have spoken about permeability. The extent of permeability on the site is quite extensive from a pedestrian point of view. And the whole objective has been to link the site to the Sydney Road retail area through both Rosa and Wilkinson Street. One of the things that the development does very successfully is it enhances the heritage values that are on the site, which are in a limited area of the site. And that's those two terraces to Rosa Street and the old chimney, which is designated by Heritage Vic. We've retained those features and we've included them in a number of urban spaces which are to the benefit of the wider community. I put it to you tonight that the development provides significant community benefit for the things that it does. In terms of... Um, improvements to the upfill line, the removal of this building and the creation of those links and pedestrian connections is in fact going to be an absolute urban design bonus for this part of Brunswick. But the thing that I think we haven't been given considerable credit for is the fact that this is a very significant employment project. It seeks to generate somewhere around 1,693 square metres of retail floor space with, with it brings employment but also an unprecedented level of office floor space. I've been working in Moreland for a long time. I've not put before this council an office development of this size ever. And the councillors, most of you councillors will be familiar with the sorts of projects that I do. This is a very large office development. So what I say to all of you is that this is an exceptional development. I think it's going to be an absolute positive for this part of Brunswick. The planning scheme advocates for change. It doesn't just advocate change for the site, but it advocates change for the sites around the site. So with respect to our neighbours, there'll be significant change to their properties 
that will not manifest in the sort of existing conditions that you see there now. Now, we acknowledge that we haven't slavishly uh, adhered to the DDO requirements because we think that, in fact, there are areas within the DDO that are silent about the sorts of heights that could be achieved, and that's particularly along the railway line. But we've also, if we were able to put that first image up that Vita spoke to, have constructed a series of four buildings that are modulated with variable heights, avoiding this uh, infernal wedding cake approach and having individuality to each buildings and introducing a very natural brick and robust uh, materials that actually complement the chimney and the heritage buildings. The heritage building will be repurposed for a better use. It will form part of this wonderful link that will link the railway line. Now, in respect to traffic, the expectations that we can develop an activity centre without there being a degree of congestion or increase in traffic is just par for the course. But what we have done is we've located all the car parking within the basement mm -hmm. car parks and have invited this council to work with us on a shared pedestrian zone in both Rosal and Wilkinson Street. At the end of the day, it's your decision. But what we've done in Rosal Street is set back from the street line to invite you to work with us on a pavement treatment that gives a pedestrian flow out to the station. I think I've taken my time, but if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much. You. Um, councillors, are there any questions? Um, I actually do have one question, um, and that is in reference to Clause 22.08, Environmentally Sustainable Development. Um, I do recall having a discussion um, with you previously on a previous project about that. With um, this development, do you feel that this achieves that clause in, in the planning scheme? I, I think we do, and in fact, we're somewhat surprised at the variability of the advice that comes from um, your offices in terms of ESD. The brief here has been to have a very highly responsive ESD response. So I, in fact, after this meeting, have asked our ESD expert to confer with your ESD expert to get their heads around ESD because, quite frankly, it's a very, very odd sort of area of, of planning. And what we want to do is certainly come to the party with respect to the ESD credentials for the site. It, it, it has in our mind a number of credentials, heritage credentials, public space credentials, urban design credentials, and ESD is one of them. We're not reconciling from that fact. So we're happy to have the discussion. And we're happy to have the discussion at Compulsory Conference about those issues also. The discussion isn't closed as far as I'm concerned, and certainly as far as the applicant is concerned. Great. So we're happy to deal with that, Councillor. Thank you very much. So no other questions from councillors? No? OK, thank you very much. So, councillors, can I please have a motion for this agenda item, Councillor Kavanagh? Uh, can I move the officer recommendation on page three, four, and five of tonight's agenda? If I have a seconder, I'd like to speak to it. Is there a seconder that wishes to? Uh, Councillor Sue Bolton seconding that item. Councillor Kavanagh? Good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, look, I am fully supportive of the officer recommendation, which is to um, it, the council submission to VCAD to refuse the application. And because there are some, some standout things that mean that I think a refusal is uh, the right way to go. Um, if we look at point one of the refusal, the officer refusal, point 1A talks about exceeding the height of 25 metres. It actually exceeds the height of 25 metres in some spots by a very large degree. In buildings one and four, it exceeds up to 11.7 metres in height. Uh, point B, uh, the gentleman was asking about wall heights. In Victoria Street, the preferred wall height is 8 to 11 metres, and in um, uh, Wilkinson and Rossiter Street, the preferred height is 7 to 10 metres. And this proposal exceeds those. 
the upper levels of the uh, buildings don't achieve the five metre setback and there is some overshadowing as pointed out in uh, um, refusal point 1E. Uh, point uh, 2 and point 4 of the refusal talks about the mobility within the site and particularly the stairwell uh, and, the, uh, and the safe pedestrian access. And uh, point 8 talks about the extent of the demolition of uh, the heritage buildings at 15 and 13 uh, Rosser Street. Right? So I'm supportive of the refusal. But in saying that, I want to say that there's some aspects of this application that I actually agree with the applicant. I think that there are some positives in this application. I am pleased to see retail space and I'm particularly pleased to see office space, as was mentioned. I'm particularly to see um, underground car parking of 335 vehicles and 350 bike spaces, etc. I'm pleased to see the retention of the chimney and I'm pleased to see the retention of the, the, uh, the, the facade of those two buildings in Rosser Street. But as the officer recommendation says, I don't think that goes far enough and I agree. I'd also like to see some, uh, some more acknowledgement of the heritage of the site as being uh, the Australian Licorice Factory. And I think the owners are still the same owners and I'd like to see that. In essence, I'm saying to the applicant, I understand your need, your feeling the need to go to VCAT for failure to make a decision, but my encouragement would be uh, to withdraw that and to work with us a bit more, because I do think there are some positives in this application, but obviously there are some things, and particularly exceeding the height levels, which uh, are a bridge too far. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Councillor Bolton? Are there any other councillors that wish to speak? Councillor Riley? Um, look, I think the, uh, Councillor Kavanagh has covered most of it, but I would like to say that um, this is probably one of the largest, or it's certainly one of the larger uh, developments we've seen in our city. And given that, I think that the proposal is somewhat undercooked. So um, if you look at the community that we serve here, <coughs> We actually want the community to be able to access the site, whether you've got mobility issues or whether you use a wheelchair. And I don't think that the visitability and the accessibility for your properties meets the standards. It's detailed by the officers in the report. And also the access across the site is quite disturbing. There's a lot of stairs in there and not a lot of ramps for people to get up to the, the building. I know the officers have discussed this with you, but I think given the immensity of this site and the amount of money that is involved in it, I think it could have actually been developed much... Uh, pro the proposal should be much more uh, robust, I think. Um, so I think the, the poor ESD is a major concern for me. Uh, the lack of proposal around deep soil planting is another major concern. You're only, your proposal is only outlining around about 25% of that. There's another 75%, which is a question mark for me. Um, officers are still seeking that information. So I think I'm sort of echoing uh, Councillor Kavanagh's re reports. I'd urge you to... to um, have more discussions with our officers and come back with some slightly more robust proposals because I think there's a lot of good about this proposal around the employment opportunities and the retail opportunities, the separation of the buildings, the sight lines and the, the laneway kind of aspects that's going to be part of this proposal are, are very good. Uh, I think the, the, um, the heritage buildings are quite, um, that you're retaining them is great, but you're actually not, you're only retaining a very small part of them and it's, it's a little bit kind of uh, almost facadism. So, I think I'd just encourage you to go back and do a little bit more work in that regard because I think we're getting there um, and it's unfortunate that you're going to be cat, but um, I support the proposal that's been put up. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? No? Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll put Councillor Kavanagh's motion to a vote. All those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried. So yeah, we'd like to have that uh, noted um, as unanimous request by Councillor Riley. Okay, thank you. I'll pass back to the uh, officers for the next steps. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So the Urban Planning Committee has just resolved to advise the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal that Council does not support the application, subject to the grounds contained within the officer recommendation. Uh, so VCAP will be making, ultimately making the final decision on this application uh, and I note that objectors have until the 5th of March to lodge any statements of grounds with VCAP and that the matter is scheduled for a hearing on the 2nd of July. Uh, objectors who have lodged statement of grounds with VCAP will have the op opportunity to address the tribunal directly at the hearing. Thank okay. you.
Thank you very much, and, and thank you to all those that asked questions and, and spoke tonight. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda, um, and that is one to three, Oberon Street, Coburg, and that is MPS 2017-551. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, councillors, and good evening, members of the gallery. The next item for this evening is. Sorry, do we have any technology <coughs> issue? There it is. Councillors. Okay, the next item for this evening is an application of 133 Oberon Street in Coburg. It's a proposal for the development uh, of land for five double storey dwellings with a waiver of the car parking space. So the subject site is actually marked up on the aerial uh, photograph on the screen. It uh, contains two sites, a combined uh, lot area of 1,056 square metres. It's actually a repeat application. There was an application for the land back in 2016 that was refused by council officers. Uh, this application has come back to council to address uh, grounds of refusal of the previous application. Uh, as I mentioned, five dwellings. Uh, two of the dwellings are five bedrooms, dwelling one and five, which I'll take you to. Uh, dwelling uh, four has four bedrooms, and dwelling two and three contain two bedrooms. In terms of car parking, each dwelling has uh, the required car parking space, uh, but there is a waiver for the visitor car parking space. Uh, so looking at the local context, so the photo in the top left-hand corner uh, refers to the two uh, sites. It's one of three Oberon Street. To the right of that, the two-storey townhouse. Uh, that's to the immediate north of a laneway. There's a laneway that separates, uh, uh, or that, that adjoins the subject land. To the bottom of image three, that dwelling sits to the immediate south of the subject site. And image four, there's two townhouses opposite the subject Land. Subject site, uh, again up on the screen there, would be a residential zone. Uh, there's a special building overlay over the back of the site. The special building overlay just refers to uh, potential flooding, one in 100 year flooding on the water. Taking you to the plan, so as I mentioned, dwelling one and five at the front of the site, uh, five bedrooms, uh, dwelling two and three, uh, two bedrooms, and dwelling four is four bedrooms. And then upstairs, first floor. I'm not having luck with technology tonight. I apologise, councillor. It seems that our screen and computer system has gone to sleep. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, look. Basically, in closing, um, the as I said, uh, look, the recommendation is uh, to support the proposal. There was uh, six objections to the application, I believe, um, and uh, there was a pit that was held on the 11th of December. We had. Uh, uh, three residents that attended. We also had Councillor Abood in attendance at that meeting. Key issue was. Um, uh, one of the key issues was car parking. The applicant, applicant did go away, uh, revised the plans, made some changes to the plans, taking on advice, uh, some advice from council officers. Uh, the recommendation includes conditions to make improvements to the plans based also on uh, some of the outcomes of that meeting. Thank you, Thank you very much. Are there any objectors here tonight that wish to speak um, to this item? Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, if there's uh, no one that wishes to speak um, against the item, is the proponent or representative of the proponent here tonight? Thank you. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, George Stavrius, uh, 
representing the um, the applicant. Uh, just really briefly, I just wanted to say that um, in conversations with council, um, as well as at the PID meeting, um, we have made some amendments to the plans to uh, address the concerns brought up by council, particularly uh, neighbourhood character, um, as well as some of the overshadowing and walls on boundary that the uh, the neighbour number five over on street, um, some of the objections that they um, uh, they expressed. Um, it's always been an, you know, our intention to work with council in this new proposal in order to um, prepare a design that councils can support, and we believe that now this uh, council that this uh, proposal achieves that. The ground floor uh, pitched roof forms, uh, reducing the visual bulk to complement the uh, streetscape, the new window and door proportions. Um, the extent of the walls on the boundary being reduced with the introduction of the one metre setback to the dwelling floor garage from the southern boundary, um, as well as uh, the first walls of dwellings two and three now becoming detached, um, and the additional increases to the upper level setbacks to dwelling floor that exceed the setbacks um, the, of standard B17. Um, as well as increasing the sizes of the um, secluded private open spaces of the rear. All of these work to um, address both council and um, uh, many of the objectors' concerns, particularly those expressed by the immediate neighbour um, at number five. Um, and we believe that this is a design that respects the neighbourhood character of Oberon Street, um, as well as the amenity of the resident. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, are there any questions for the representative? Councillor Abu. Um, yeah, I just wondered if you're catching any water on the site or whether they're... I noticed the bedrooms are all upstairs, um, which, considering uh, you know, the hot weather that we have in Melbourne during summer, you could assume that they would be quite hot, and especially considering the type of building materials that seem to be uh, proposed to be used on the, on the buildings. Um, I was just wondering about, you know, insulation or whether you would expect to have sort of reverse cycle air conditioners and then if there's any solar panels on the site to power those things, like in terms of the environmental factors regarding this property? Sure. Um, firstly, to start with uh, a minor point, but not all the bedrooms are on the first floor, on the, the first two dwellings, there are some on the ground floor as well. Um, the I should specify that the top floor has bedrooms. That's, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the uh, uh, ESD, um, uh, features of the proposal, um, the, uh, as will be reflected in the updated uh, best report that needs to be included with the conditions, they'll achieve um, higher than the six star standard required. Um, the, they're only preliminary uh, calculations now, but it's at least a six and a half star, and that is achieved through things like the orientation, the um, higher uh, levels of insulation in both the ceiling. Um, in terms of the uh, water, uh, the stormwater treatment, for example, um, additional to water tanks is also a rain garden to catch some of the runoff on the um, uh, on the driveway itself. Um, uh, yeah, that, that summarises the ESD. Thank you very much. Can um, you mentioned that some of the bedrooms are downstairs. Are you referring to the, the ones that are listed as studies? Oh, the potential bedrooms, right. that's correct, yes. Mm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions, councillors? No? Okay, thank you very much. So, councillors, could I please have a motion for this agenda item tonight? Read the officer's recommendation. Okay, that's uh, Councillor Carly Hannon moving the officer's recommendation. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Farnley. Thank you. Councillor Callaghan, would you like to speak to the item? Councillor Farnley? No? Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? Councillor Abu? Yeah. Um, this, I don't feel like I have uh, the legal requirements from the planning scheme to refuse this development. Um, but I do feel like I will be voting for the officer's recommendation with a pretty heavy heart. I think that it's super crowded. Um, I think that it could just do a whole lot better. And um, I think that it would be really good if we could see a style of development that we can really call 
um, something to be proud of in the city in terms of the legacy that we're leaving for buildings that need to last a lifetime and not be rebuilt again. So um, although I don't feel like I can uh, vote against the recommendation, I just want to acknowledge that I do it with a pretty heavy heart because I think we can do better in the city. Thank you, Councillor Boot. Is there any other comment from any of the other councils? In that case, I'll put uh, Councillor Carly hand. Uh, Councillor Bolton, do you want to? Well, I just, um, I'd echo Councillor Boot's comments. Um, I mean, you raised the issue about the lack of compliance with environmental sustainability. Um, but another objector talked to me about the impact on the street of the fact that, you know, there are potentially um, a lot of bedrooms in the various dwellings, but really the lack of car parking could, depending on who populated the bedrooms, whether they were little kids or um, a whole lot of adults, it could um, generate real problems in the street. Um, but I think there's no um, no uh, legal avenue under the Moreland Planning Scheme to oppose the, um, the development on that basis. So I'll um, support the application. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Councillor Kavanagh? No, I'm speaking. Um, look, I must say I'm a bit with that, uh, with Councillor Abood and Councillor Bolton on this one. If we do include the studies as bedrooms, uh, then I'm not including the studied nooks. Uh, which I accept are not a bedroom, but the ones that are big enough to be a bedroom. Uh, by my calculations, I might be wrong, I'm looking at 18 bedrooms on this site. Yep. That's a, a lot of bedrooms on a site. That's a lot of, um, yeah, that's a lot of accommodation on a thousand, just over a thousand square metres. But in saying that, um, the planning scheme that's before us, I think I have to vote for it. But uh, yeah, I think uh, the points made by Councillor Bolton and Councillor Boot are valid. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Are there any other speakers to this item? In that case, I'll put uh, Councillor Carly Hannan's motion to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Declare that carried and I'll pass back to the officers. Thank you, Councillors. The Urban Planning Committee have resolved to issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit for the proposed development at number one to three Oberon Street. As objectors, all parties will receive a copy of the notice of decision. As objectors, you'll have 21 days in which to lodge an appeal uh, to VCAT. Planning, the permit applicant also has 60 days in which to lodge an appeal to VCAT to contest any of the conditions contained herein. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, and thank you for those uh, that attended for this item. Now moving on to 392 to 394 Moreland Road, Brunswick West, uh, and that is MPS 2016-633. <coughs> Last item, so yeah. Uh, this site is at 392 to 394 Moreland Road, Brunswick West. It's about 140 metres east of the intersection of Melville Road, so it's within the uh, Moreland Melville Road local activity centre. The site, as you can see there, it's two consolidated sites with a total area of about uh, 1,461 square metres located within a residential growth zone and it's affected by the parking overlay as well as the recently in Studio 24. Surrounding area, it's uh, got a, a well-made laneway along the back and then along Moreland Road, there's some detached dwellings plus a couple of sort of infill double storeys along the bottom. So we've got a bit of a unusual situation here because this was refused by officers, so this was um, refused under delegation. Just wondering. Oh, here we go. Apologies. Uh, so originally, the uh, the advertised plans were for a four-storey building containing nineteen dwellings. The proposal was advertised, and a total of sixty-four objections were received, and it was refused under delegation for a number of reasons, including that the development failed to meet the objectives of the neighbourhood character policy, 
failed to, to satisfy objectives and standards of Clause 55 and failed to satisfy Schedule 2 of the Residential Road Zone, which was at that stage proposed. The permit applicant lodged a, an appeal with VCAT against Council's decision to refuse the application. Uh, six objectors lodged statements of grounds with VCAT, with two of those objector parties joining the VCAT appeal. The merits hearing to decide the application has been scheduled for the 4th and 5th of April. <coughs> However, a compulsory conference mediation session was held on the 23rd of January, attended by all the parties. All parties in attendance at the compulsory conference agreed to a mediated outcome involving issue of a planning permit based on discussion plans. The changes agreed to included reducing the number of dwellings from 19 to 12, redesigning dwelling seven to reduce shadow impacts, relocating balconies to the internal access way away from the western boundary, increasing the depth of ground floor studies fronting Moreland Road, increasing side setbacks and um, removing some ground floor bedrooms to provide additional space for uh, canopy trees and increasing side setbacks in general. So the agreed changes have been prepared as without prejudice plans, which have been um, circulated as part of the urban planning committee process. VCAT also directed the applicant to advertise the without prejudice plans to adjoining properties. Uh, no additional objector parties have been joined since that re-advertising. So I'll just quickly take you through sort of each change, well, each floor. So this was the advertised ground floor and the without prejudice ground floor. So you can sort of see the increases to landscaping opportunities. Advertised first floor, there was uh, some substantial amenity issues with some of those bedrooms in the middle. And then the without prejudice, they've opened up that area in the middle. Second floor will be advertised plans. Second floor without prejudice discussion. Third floor and third floor. So with the elevations, you can see they've removed the balconies that were previously facing sort of towards the east as well. And I think it's clear, like when you look at the Moreland, Moreland Road elevation, you can now see that, that there's a bit more separation between them. And a concern that both council and the neighbouring objectors had was the shadowing impact of the four storey building. And so you can see at the top there, that's the 9am shadow of the advertised plans. And at the bottom, you've got 9am and then 10am. So while well, there's a slight non-compliance at 10am based on existing shadows on that site, um, it's very close to compliance and it's compliant the rest of the day. So that's a, a good outcome within a um, residential growth zone. So it's recommended that um, councillors support the uh, consent order reached during the mediation. And we, we can let VCAT know would want it to go, so. Thank you very much. So I'd now um, ask if there are any objectors here tonight that wish to um, speak to this item. Please come forward. <clears throat> My name is Helen Philippou. We're at 396 Moreland Road, so we're next door. Um, I wish to speak also on behalf of our neighbour who's given me permission. He who owns the two dollar shop down there had some concerns about parking on Moreland Road as we're already struggling to park at the moment, let alone having I suppose if you look at it's going to be twelve um, dwellings possibly two cars per dwelling, so an additional 24 cars. Um, she's concerned about her customers and she's concerned about um, generally not being able to get a park in front of her own shop and um, also the laneway because the uh, entrance to um, all the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Things will be through the rear laneway, which 
in them spend is more than that. If you consider the time in the third mark, not more. But only one way. Um, they were Lynn's concerns. So she does something with this place for her. Um, for ourselves, laneway still seems to be an issue. The last uh, traffic engine report number seven is finished in 2018. And um, we had great concerns. We've already had, since the um, compulsory room, we've had another news where somebody's backed out of their driveway, which happens to be next door to their front door, which is in the laneway. We also have 13 dwellings in that laneway going across the back of between Irvine Crescent and Northern Road, and also that intersection. Their front doors are in that laneway, and with an additional how many more cars, there is a concern of that. Yeah. Does something have to happen before somebody does something? That is a real problem. Uh, we have many old work at the local school, we have many young families whose children attend our school, and they use Irvine Crescent, they use Moreland Road, they use the main as, as a thoroughfare. So our concern, our primary concern at the moment is we have gone through the the things that we decided upon are not necessarily what we want, but they're much better than what we would have had been proposed originally. But our main concern is the fact that the last traffic engineer's report was in 2010. When now 2018, are we leaving behind, are we allowing all these developments to occur without thinking long term? It's a very short sighted. Um, it needs to be addressed now before things proceed further. And uh, something drastic does happen. We don't want to leave a legacy behind with these people behind getting off the path. The progress. Not all decisions made by government are right decisions. Um, we need to acknowledge that um, yes. there is going to be progress in our area. We can see it happening. But it has to be a legacy that's going to be left behind that's worth it. It can't be just for the sake of it. Thank you very much. I believe there's one question. Could I ask you a question? Yes. Um, were you one of the two parties to yes. BK? You were. Yes. And so um, I gather you're you're still an objector. You haven't uh, withdrawn your objection. You still feel it's, a, it's an overdevelopment, if you still feel concerned. Look, we still feel it's an overdevelopment. We yeah. still feel four storeys is much too high. Yes. Um, we have signed off and said, yes, we've well, if this is the best we can do, right. can we actually stand up to everybody and say, as you know, as the two objectors that were there, we don't want this. The reality is we don't want it in our area. No. We're a you know a block of ten homes. Yes. This is not in character with what we have. Um, they've always been homes. I've can lived in area my entire life. Can I ask one more? When you did sign that, you realised that you were signing, saying that you're you're basically you know, as satisfied as you could be with the application. Well, as satisfied now. as we could be. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that wasn't addressed, and it did yes. come to us later, was that um, an engineer's report for the laneways. Right. Um, and that is a real concern. Right. We use the laneway to park our cars. Yeah. Uh, my daughters can't get into the backyard because you can only have, you know, two extra, two cars in the back. Mm. We've got two cars out the front, and yes. quite often they have nowhere to park. Yeah. That's only going to get worse. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other objectors that wish to speak? Please come forward. Hello, um, I'm Sarah Piper. I'm at Unit 2 of 190 Moreland Road, so I'm directly on the other side. Um, I'd just like to second what you said about the laneway, just to add a couple of extra things onto that as well. There's a lot of T intersections in around there, directly beside our house, that are completely blind around the corner. You can't see, there's no way around there. So you actually need to get all the way into the intersection before seeing around the corner. There's no signs, there's no, you know, there's no mirrors or anywhere. They're both running into the direction as far as traffic flow. There have been accidents earlier, I haven't witnessed them, but the, you know, the fence palings are knocked off the corner about every two or three months. It's not working the way that it is. From a personal note, I'm a paramedic. There is no way we could get an ambulance down there. There's no way to unload our stretchers. There are um, electronic stretchers that come out and lower down, and they won't unload on uneven surfaces. There's steps heading up off the road, so we don't actually have physical emergency service access to these apartments. It's a really big thing for the community moving forward, thinking of the people that actually live in this development. Um, on top of that as well, with the laneway, obviously we're then expecting all the pedestrians and bikes 
also have a normal cortisone level, which are quite uneven down here. Yep, so we're reducing the mobility and aren't dangerous to have bikes and cars on a single lane coming up and down. For us, the overshadowing, um, none of the shadow reports actually differentiate between Unit 2 and Unit 3. We sit and we do share a wall in the middle. We are closest to the boundary of the development that's going to be coming. And in none of the overshadowing reports was there a line that actually differentiated between our two houses. So it looks like we only have a certain percentage of our house overshadowed, but actually it's a, our entire unit is overshadowed by about 2 p.m. I believe it is. We actually have a courtyard that's out of our main living area above our garage there, which is our main outdoor area, which we use every day, which hasn't been considered at all. And you see as we consider as an outdoor area, there's still people overlooking it. Unfortunately, we were unable to go to the VCAT thing. We've been overseas the previous trip, so we weren't able to do that. But want to come along and yeah, let you know those things as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other objectors that wish to speak? No? Thank you. I, I wasn't objective, but I think the laneway issue has been covered. And that's okay. my concern. Great. Thank you, Husserl. Thank you. Um, uh, is the proponent or a representative of the proponent here? Please come forward. Good evening, councillors, and thank you for the opportunity to address you um, this evening. Um, look, as you've heard from Ms. Coots, we have actually heard we have listened to the objectors concerns as a result of that we've actually commenced conversations with council um, since late last year i believe it was sometime in november 2017 through those consultations with council's planning officer and with council's urban designers we have made significant alterations of the proposal um councillor cabinet you earlier this evening you asked one of the applicants to withdraw their application um, in good faith, continue to work with council, and that's a spirit in which we have approached this project. Mm -hmm. What you are seeing before you is no longer a 19 dwelling proposal over four storey. What is before you is a 12 unit development in a residential growth zone in an area where council very recently, there's been a planning scheme amendment to rezone this area where council would like to see um, more higher density growth, provided that it's respectful of the preferred um, neighbourhood character. And we say that what we have done is very, is very mindful of our interface issues, as well as the future preferred character for this area. Now, Ms Filippo has put to you, and also I think it was Ms Parker has put to you that there's some laneway issues. Um, the application has been considered by council's traffic engineers. It has been considered by our traffic engineers. It's also been referred to Vic Roads. And none of those engineers have raised any concerns in relation to this particular proposal. I hear the objectors. There may be some macro level issues associated with site access, but this is not something that this application can address. This is a much more global issue that I would invite council to consider in a different forum. But in so far as this application is concerned, all the engineering advice that's come back to us has indicated that it is um, satisfactory and site access is appropriate. Um, Ms Coots has already taken you to a lot of the changes and I'd also like to highlight a couple of things. Not only has my um, client lost seven units, he's also pulled back and again, this is through discussions with the parties at the compulsory conference we've made further modifications. We've reorientated um, the balconies. We've provided additional screening. We've pulled the back of the um, development right back. We have removed additional bedrooms. We have increased the amount of landscaping that's available. This, site, this proposal has a site coverage of 62%. We have really, in good faith, we want to work with council. And that's why we've made such significant changes. Um, so I would like, I would invite our councillors to keep those matters in mind when making your decision this evening. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Um, councillors, do we have any questions? Councillor Kavanagh? Yeah, I do. Um, yes, look, you are correct. That's what I did say to the previous applicant. And But uh, in saying that, and I do want uh, that applicant to work with council, and I'm glad that you have. But in both cases, well, in this, his case, he was five minutes away from a refusal. In your case, it was two months after a refusal. What really concerns me is that um, 
the initial, it takes a refusal to then start working with council. That really bothers me. And that, that I mean, to be honest, uh, we never saw the plans in the original one because it was decided under delegation. But I think most people would have accepted that that was an overdevelopment of the site. And I think we only just had to look at the comparisons that were so ably put up by our officer. So yes, you're right. I do think it's good that you're working with council now, but it does disappoint me that it takes a refusal for that to happen. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Kavanagh. Um, does any of the councillors have a question for Sorry, opponents at all? Question was it? No. Apologies. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, councillors. Uh, could I have a motion for this item, Councillor Rafali? I'd like to move the council officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rafali. Do we have a seconder? A seconder from Councillor Carly Hannan. Uh, Councillor Rafali. Uh, thank you to the objectors for coming along tonight. Uh, it kind of echoes Councillor Boone and Councillor Bolton's previous sentiments that this isn't something that uh, we're excited to, to put forward, uh, 12 dwellings on the site. But uh, when you consider um, where we're at, it was originally 19 dwellings. It's a significant improvement on what was originally proposed. It's down to 12. There's increase in setbacks on the side developments. There's more landscaping. There's redesigning on you know, seven for less shadowing. There's just a number of improvements and you have to sort of consider uh, what would happen if we uh, knock this back. Uh, this developers come here in good faith, uh, come working with you in good faith. How would VCAT perceive that? Uh, it is a concern for me given that they were originally going to VCAT for 19 dwellings. So uh, considering, you know, weighing up uh, all those elements, uh, I'd rather see a council's position be that 12 units, uh, 12 dwellings, uh, go ahead um, and make that clear to VCAT, um, which is why I'm moving the council officer's uh, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Farley. Councillor Carly Hannon? Yeah, I'll speak on this one as well. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of this development, and I think I, um, the main, my main concerns also come similar to those of um, the residents who've come tonight around the laneway as the vein access and that whole issue around, um, you know, ambulance access, um, the safety for children and cars and the overuse that that laneway is going to experience. Um, but at the end of the day, we're here to judge it on the planning scheme and recognising that it's already, um, you know, got the process to go to VCAT. We have to approve it. Thank you. Um, Councillor Boot. Um, yeah, I, this has even more concern for me than the last one because of the nature of the um, scenario where, like the first uh, issue, the first application that we were refusing, the, da the VCAT stuff is already playing out. So we've delivered a proposal that looks better than absolutely unacceptable to make us feel like it's great. You know, six dwellings would be great. Uh, we, we, yeah. It, it, this is going outside the box. This this is, seems to be a new thing where, um, you know, we've thought for a while that maybe applicants um, include their VCAT fee as part of their application and the process that, okay, what we'll do is we'll ask for the stars. They'll say, no, you can have a quarter of the moon. We'll say, no, we want the stars and this lawyer's going to show us how. Um, but I, I just think that this is not something that I'm the slightest bit excited about. In terms of the laneway, which is quite obviously um, an issue for everybody, including the new tenants of the new development, um, which will inevitably be built. I wonder if um, where, and I don't know who can answer this, but if someone can take responsibility for ensuring that there is some kind of mirror or there is some kind of scenario re relating to the traffic issues that are inevitably going to occur so that we don't end up with a lot of accidents. I know those mirrors that sit above the corner where both people can see are quite effective, um, but I'm, yeah, I, I don't even... I don't, yes, that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Abood. Are there any other councillors that wish to speak to this item? Yes, Councillor Riley. I just wanted to add that I'm kind of still on a learning curve after almost 18 months in this role, and I'm very disappointed to see that um, there's no need to have accessibility for these properties, so people with mobility issues or wheelchair issues won't, aren't required to. We're not under our state laws, Victorian laws, means because it, uh, when we had 19 properties 
you had to accommodate for people with mobility issues. And now because it's down to less than 12, I think, you know, the developers are let off the hook. So I just want to, um, I, I can't change the outcome of this, but I just want to express my concern around that as I did earlier with a much larger development that people with mobility issues and living in these properties for life is just so much limited because people will have to be forced to move if they have mobility issues because they're multi-storey dwellings. So um, just wanted to make that point um, that we can't control this and it's outside of our ability, but I just wanted to express that. Um, and in terms of the laneway and the street frontage, just in terms of the officer's report, they are saying they want to create more activity um, in the front with the pedestrian and, and bike users and so on and to keep more of the car use to the back. So that's just one aspect of this development which has been thought through. But there are clearly going to be some other issues we need to deal with around traffic post whatever the outcome tonight in terms of the proposals that have been raised by Councillor Wood and others. Um, and I think that um, the community needs to work with Council to address those apropos of what happens tonight either way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Uh, is there any other debate from councillors? Councillor Boxen. I would like to echo Councillor Riley's comments about uh, disability access or, you know, people of just, uh, you know, lesser mobility. I think, um, I think this is particularly bad development on that front. Um, I've also got some concerns around the laneway and uh, the laneway use as well, um, you know, jamming so many uses into one narrow laneway, but particularly I think the, um, the you know, lack of accessibility for people of lesser mobility, I mm -hmm. think, um, given that Moreland, you know, I mean, yes, there are a lot of new families and um, younger people moving into Moreland, but there's also an ageing population as well. And I think... Um, I think this is sort of massively problematic having um, having developments that are so um, so lacking in diversity, um, where it's all or one thing uh, uh, or, or or nothing, you know, either all inaccessible or, or very little accessibility. Um, I think that's particularly problematic, and I'm not sure which way I want to vote, but I certainly. Um, you know, I um, do feel for the residents who sort of felt like, well, I mean, I think it is good that there has been a reduction in the intensity of the development, but um, I do feel for the residents who feel that even the reduction isn't enough, but uh, feel that they have to um, go along with it uh, with gritted teeth so that you get don't get something um, much worse. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Uh, is there any further debate? I just like to yeah. think. Yeah, Councillor Dorney. Uh, just on the ESD of this development, um, it says that it, the, a, sustain, a sustainable design assessment was provided. However, because of the number of dwellings, um, a sustainable management plan was also required, which was not provided um, before the issue of refusal. I just think um, I echo, obviously, um, all the comments of the councillors have provided to, to, um, tonight. But, but one thing I would say moving forward, there is real potential to um, work well with the, with the planning officers to really redeem um, and add some integrity to this development through enhancing the ESD. Um, Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Dorney. Okay, um, in that case, now I do note that uh, this resolution is broken into two parts. Um, the first part is uh, Council giving consent to the construction of the 12 dwellings and the second, so that's part A, and then part B, uh, states that uh, if all parties do not give consent to the agreement, uh, then the and the matter proceeds to a merits hearing. Council's position before VCAT will be that it sets out um, in the notice of refusal to grant the planning permit. So that that is the um, the difference between the part A and the part B. And so uh, we'll go through both of those individually. Um, so firstly, I'd like to put um, part A um, to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried. Um, and now I'll put part B of the motion um, to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? I declare that carried also. I'll now pass back to the officers. Thank you. So the Urban Planning Committee has resolved to the issue of its planning permit subject to conditions contained within part A of the officer recommendation. Council will now write to VCAT confirming its consent. Following issue of a VCAT order, a permit will issue. 
In the event that consent is not reached by all parties, the matter will proceed to a hearing commenced in 4th of April, in which council will uh, defend its original refusal. Thank you very much. Okay, councillors, I, I note that there is um, no urgent business uh, for tonight's meeting, so I would like to thank all those who attended tonight's meeting here in the gallery and, and to all those at home. Um, I'd also like to note in advance my absence at the next Urban Planning Committee meeting where Councillor Farnley will be chairing. I look forward to seeing you all in April. So I now declare the Urban Planning Meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.